Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and right behind me I've got a bin, which you can see has a sticker on it, August 21. And offhand, I don't know how old that is. Hey Siri, how many days have passed since August 21st? It was 134 days ago. All right. So 134 days of age, and I know that 38 days ago, so I guess when the bin was 96 days of age, was when I gave it its last feeding. So the past five and a half weeks, no fresh food has been added to this bin. Over that time, I've been hoping that the worms would break down any remaining scraps of food and bedding that are in the bin. And to drive that even further, I've even gone in there a few times and picked out all these large chunks, chunks of food and bedding and anything I could find to really try to end up with a nice finished product within the bin. And I was prepared to just let it keep going this way. Let the bin keep foraging, let the let the worms keep working it down nice and fine. But a lot of people have been saying, hey, why not start migrating these worms out of this container? The material looks good. It's going to take a little bit of time anyway for all the worms to make their way over into one far edge of the bin where the feedings are going to start getting added again. The area that I refer to as the horizontal migration feeding zone. So, um... I figured, why not? Let's get to work on it. One thing we did do recently, last time we were in here, only three days ago, was we did remove a large piece of paper. And that large piece of paper was just uh, covering the top, so I took it out. It was all tattered anyway. And I threw it into another of my worm bins. I figured I'd go back and grab that piece of paper and use that as some of the bedding that we're going to rebuild this um, feeding zone with. But the feeding zone is going to be on the very edge of the bin, trying to lure all the worms out of the material so that at some point soon those worms could be scooped out and they'll have just abandoned all the compost and then the compost can be harvested just by scooping it out or pouring it out of the bin. So let's get this thing up on the bench and get to work on it. Okay, so here we are with the bin out here on the bench and besides the bin, like I said earlier, I've gone ahead and I've dipped into my um, other bin and extracted a whole bunch of this newspaper that was scattered across the top of it. Some of this newspaper had actually been covering this container and some of the newspaper that was actually in that container too. I just took it all out and I upgraded that other container with a nice fresh sheet of paper covering the top surface and all of the old paper has now been reclaimed so that we could use it here as bedding. In addition to the bedding we've also got a nice variety of delicious food morsels. You can see here I've got a uh, a whole bunch of coffee including the coffee filter itself and um, a lot of people have made reference to the um, potential of maybe using a banana split in half so I've done exactly that I've taken a banana and split it in half and I know a lot of people have just said use that alone as it is as the bait to bring the worms out of the material and have them congregate but uh, either way I'm just using that as part of our bait here as well as a whole bunch of other kitchen scraps strawberries and veggies and cucumbers and you name it and then um, some of the other stuff that I'll usually use material that usually goes hand in hand with feedings is my form of grit in my case I'm just using pulverized eggshell and another funny thing that I like to use when I'm setting up one of these horizontal migration feeding zone is my perforated barrier made of cardboard you know not attempting to really prevent the worms from making their way out of the compost over into the feeding area obviously because it's full of holes it's um it's really just meant as a visual aid to help me see where I had you know set up the dividing line between the old compost and the new fresh feeding zone so let's get to work on putting this thing together so you might have noticed the uh, the cardboard covering things here is a little bit different than it looked a moment ago when I first showed the bin it's because I I did use it to become the source of material when I built this little divider gizmo. So I just took a segment of this cardboard that was covering things up and at the same time I fashioned it to better cover things here. Now I um, another thing I'll sometimes do when I set up one of these migration zones is I begin to let the bin start drying out because not only am I trying to lure them into wherever the feeding zone has been built, I'm also trying to repel them from the material that I want them to evacuate. And one possible way to get them to exit the material that they're occupying is to make it less hospitable. And my idea was to maybe let it dry out a little bit over time. 
which would make it into a less hospitable space that the worms would maybe not want to be in maybe motivating them to go looking for a more damp comfortable place to be and I'm, um, I'm a little bit torn on whether I really want to get to that stage yet here I might do that but I still need to decide so we'll maybe we'll decide that along the way my um I guess my main reason for maybe wanting to keep it was so that even though the worms are getting lured out of the compost over into one or the other edge of the bin there's still going to be material out on this top surface that I'd like for them to continue focusing on while some of the worms are getting you know uh, motivated to move into the feeding zone other ones might stay behind and continue working down some of the material that's still remaining in the compost because the compost is not perfect not that it needs to be um, but I figured if I could just keep the entire been a little bit more moist and comfortable then maybe some of that stuff on the surface um, can also get broken down while some of the worms are exiting the compost so I don't know I'm not 100% sold on whether that's a good idea or not we might just end up leaving the, um, the finished compost somewhat uncovered maybe with just a thin sheet of paper to allow it to start drying off let that process begin as well but I'll decide during the, um, the setup here so we'll um, we'll be you know using this dividing wall to uh, partition the finished compost from the new feeding zone that we're setting up with all that bedding and food that we bought down here. So we need to decide about how much space we want to allocate to this. And a lot of times I'll just segment off maybe you know a quarter or maybe even less of the um, the space in here. It's not that important how big it is. The worms will definitely find it. Um, and later on, I will actually come back in here if the food starts to get depleted. I'll be adding more food to that feeding zone, pushing everything in a little bit further so I could add even more food to the far edge of it. So um, sometimes I'll start smaller with the advanced knowledge of the fact that I will in time be trying to push everything further inboard. Um, so, you know, now that we've got a, a rough sense of where we want it to be, we need to clear things over, move things over a little bit, make space for it. But before we do that, let's just see how things are progressing in here. I always like to inspect how the material in the bin is looking. And it's got a really nice crumbly texture to it. It's certainly nice and damp throughout. Certainly well populated with plenty of worms too. But I could certainly see allowing this stuff to dry out a little bit more to make it a uh, a little bit less hospitable for the worms so that they would be maybe motivated to go looking for another place that they would feel more comfortable in because I, I feel like if the material was really completely all broken down with no little scraps of stuff to keep them from wanting to leave then I would feel like the food alone is a good enough motivator to get them to leave but I know that since there's still scattered food throughout this bin little bits of food and bedding everywhere you know that combined with a nice cozy damp place for the worms to remain is going to uh is going to hamper the migration effort so i think um i think that is probably going to become a uh, a contributing factor to my decision i might actually end up just scrapping the plastic at the end and allowing the uh, finished compost to begin airing out and drying out. Here's a little plum pit. Maybe we'll just throw it in with the food and let it go with the food when we do our first extraction of the first round of worms and uh, and material that they're inhabiting. And you know, I guess that's a pretty clear piece of evidence right there, right? I mean, I went I went through this bin a number of times, picking out large food scraps and then later picking out small food scraps but I still missed a fairly good size morsel that um that that plum pit so that probably you know also supports my theory that this thing is still riddled with all kinds of edible material and you know if I do stumble on any of it if I do find a, another remaining chunk of something edible maybe I'll scoop it out while I'm at it but I'm not gonna go crazy I think that the finished um, product here is probably gonna be um, a whole bunch of nice 
finished castings on one edge of the bin and that's going to be over on this side I guess we'll start stacking it up over there um, clearly riddled with chunks of leaves and whatnot which could potentially prevent the worms from wanting to leave because they'll find that there's still scraps of food that they can continue working on and eating over here we'll be um we'll probably cover up with just maybe a piece of newspaper a thin piece of newspaper that will allow the material to begin drying off and becoming a slightly less hospitable place for the worms to be hopefully uh motivating them to want to find a more damp and comfortable section of the bin to move over to it's a good number of worms in here there was no feedings applied to this bin anywhere so we shouldn't really expect to find a concentration of worms anywhere so the fact that we're just finding a whole bunch of them piled up right there is maybe just representative of every section of the bin there's worms everywhere the other cool thing is that I just see tons and tons of li little tiny baby worms. So this does almost seem like a, a space where the worms have been um, quite actively breeding, multiplying their numbers. And a lot of people will tell you that they self-regulate their population, and I believe that they do. But I don't know, you know what sort of concentration you need to be at before they start doing that, because... You know, you look through this bin, you would have to, you know, give it a pretty um, high rating as far as worm density is concerned. There's worms everywhere. But it's clearly not at that limit yet where they would stop reproducing. Because everywhere you look, you just see little itsy bitsy baby juvenile worms everywhere. Every handful seems to have a good mix of not just big worms, but little baby worms too. That's always fun to see. So let's see what we could do as far as creating a nice, neat feeding zone over on this edge for them to be lured into. The plastic coverings will not be covering the, the finished compost, allowing that stuff to dry off. The, uh, the plastic will remain in the bin though, and it'll be used to cover up the feeding area. Because the feeding area, we do want that to remain nice and damp and moist and um, the kind of place where the worms would want to be. So I will reuse that piece of plastic that was covering things up here, but I'll fold it into a much smaller piece, and it will only cover up this feeding area over on this edge of the bin. So I think we've, um, we've given this whole bin a good stir. We've definitely, um, found lots of little scraps of, you know, food bits and bedding bits throughout the bin. And it was because of this stuff that I thought I might leave this bin to keep going for a while. But you know, when the audience really wants to see something, I usually find myself pretty easily swayed to um, go with the mob. <laughs> so I had no real reason to hold back from starting the, the migration. I guess my main reason for wanting to wait on it was because I, I thought we could maybe optimize it and see if we could break my record. If I'm not mistaken, there was one occasion where we managed to migrate the worms out of a batch of finished compost in only 18 days, um, which was remarkable. I think we went a week, we maybe pulled some worms out, we might have added some food, whatever. We went another week, we looked in, I forget what the deal was, but if I'm not mistaken, I think 18 days, um, very surprising, but within 18 days we found ourselves with a, a batch of completely evacuated compost all the worms had made their way over into the feeding area and the um, the migration was done so I, I kept looking at that number there thinking hey wouldn't it be kind of cool if we can kind of break the old record <laughs> but it really doesn't matter I'm not that concerned about it that was just my thinking when I was you know trying to steer this bin to sort of that optimal stage where we decide to start the migration but here we go we're setting the migration zone up now I just backfilled it a little bit so that I can start piling in some of the materials that we're going to be using here. So we've got ourselves a good amount of recycled paper here, a whole bunch of bedding material from some of our other bins. So it should already be teeming with all kinds of microscopic bacteria and 
fungi and microbes and everything. All the stuff that's really going to help the, um, the food that we place into the migration zone get kicking so that the worms are drawn to it. I just thought I might salvage a couple of the larger chunks of um, paper out of here. So I just pulled two large pieces out that we can try to cover up with in the end. Besides all this paper bedding to place under the feeding area, something else I didn't show was my uh, little box of leaves. So I thought I might also scatter some leaves in here because we know how the worms love the leaves. So let's, uh, let's also drop in a little bit of that. Seems like a nice sort of filler because the paper is going to have all these large voids and gaps in it. It seemed like by placing a little bit of crushed leaves in there we create a nice level platform that we could start putting the food items in on top of. Okay. So we've got a couple really tempting items here. We've got ourselves the nice banana. I figured I would put it on the very, very far edge. Try to use that as my main motivator to get them to make their way all the way over into the far edge of the container. The, um, the coffee, you know, maybe we'll scatter that, that in across the top. It's sort of a top cover for all the feeding here. So we'll save that for the end. Besides that, I've got another filter here too, right? More paper that we can also include with some of the bedding that we're going to place in here. Um, but this stuff doesn't have all that, you know, inoculated um, content, all that wonderful stuff that the newspaper has soaked into it, all of those microorganisms that are going to help kickstart all of this food and get all the food breaking down so that the worms are drawn to it, but that's fine. I think in combination all this stuff is going to work really well. And you know, I don't know how important it is because a bin that's already kind of at this stage probably has a good amount of, you know, grit scattered throughout it, but sometimes I just like to add it because who knows, they make their way in there. This section has no grit in it, so at least now it does by placing some of that in there. So. I like to make this um, a nice cozy spot that's really going to draw the activity, the worm composting activity. So we're going to give them another of their favorites, which is the coffee. Nice bite-sized food item. High, uh, high nitrogen content as well. So we'll tear this up into somewhat smaller pieces as well. But we don't got to go nuts. I like keeping some of the bedding pretty large so that when we go scooping through here it's easy enough to pick out from the worms. Because at some point soon, once this area starts getting mobbed with worms, we're going to want to relocate some of those worms. And when we do that, we're just going to pull everything out. But if it's easy enough to pull some of these things out of the mass of worms, to return it back into here to keep it as the, um, the feeding area, then it'll... Uh, It'll work really nicely because it's already nice and primed and actively, you know, part of the area where the worms are being drawn to. So I like to try to um, salvage as much as I can when I do my extractions of worms in this process to return a lot of that uncomposted bedding and food, if I can, back to the feeding area. So I'm, uh, I'm usually very interested in keeping all of the nice tempting items such as the banana and all those fruits and veggies down low so that it doesn't become a draw for any sort of passerby flying insects. So that's the reason I like to cover up pretty thoroughly. So all those leaves filling in all those little air gaps. Here's some more nice bedding that they're going to like cruising around in once they make their way over here. Because they'll come over for the food, they'll be drawn by the food, but then once they've had their fill, I'd also like for them to have a nice bedding area that they can go hang out in. And then go back and forth between the food area and the bedding area, so that they have everything that they need right over here, so that they have no reason to want to leave once they're over here. And now we'll just begin leveling things off nicely. I'll usually want to get right up to the top of the divider here so 
that they could take advantage of every little hole in the cardboard to crawl through to make their way over to where I want them. Yeah, you know, this material could stand to dry off a little bit. It's got a nice moisture content to it. You can tell it's nice and flaky, but by drying out, it'll definitely motivate the worms to leave it. So for that reason, I'm going to return this plastic covering over here in such a way that it covers only the feeding area. And we'll try to... Uh, reduce its size here to do only that which is to create a nice moist area where the moisture coming off of the material would try to evaporate but be unable to and just sort of keep circulating down there within that feeding zone and then as a final covering for the uh, for the finished compost we're going to use just a sheet of newspaper nothing more it's going to do a pretty good job covering up almost the entire surface. I guess we could even maybe pull this over just a hair. Then we've got complete coverage all around the edge of the bin. And here, even though it's covered, since it's paper, it should allow for some of the moisture to make its way out of the bin. It won't be drying off at a drastic pace, but it'll be better than if it were covered with plastic. If it were covered with plastic, it would stay quite damp and cozy over there. And what I really want to see happen over there is that the material starts to dry out and that the worms within the material are, um, because of that drying, motivated to go seek out a more comfortable spot, which would be right over here in the feeding area. So that's where we stand now with my oldest red wiggler bin now transitioning from its foraging stage onto the migration stage. And we'll see how long it takes. All right, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.